Greetings, this is Gynthian, and today is another episode, episode 15, on the Kingdom Chronicles server. As always, I want to help you enjoy watching or playing Minecraft anywhere. If this is the first time on my channel, and you want to get the most out of your Minecraft experience, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and click on the bell, so you know when I've produced videos. Now the first project we have today is going to be to update the giant map that we worked on last time. And here we are at the map. It is actually a map of my island, as much as I've gotten so far. And here is where a road is going to be. It's built. And here is another road where it's going to be. They both are built but they don't appear on the map to do that you have to take the map to that location and as you can see here this is the village that shows up on our large map here now as I was saying a minute ago the maps update when you go to the location that they are and open the map again very similar to the way when you first open the map and create it in the first place. A blank map, you go to that location, you open it, and it becomes the map of that space. To update it, it's the same process. So I had to walk along and go to all these locations to make all of these maps. Now, I need to pick up these maps in order to update them. And since I know I built some roads, and increased the path size here, I'm going to now go update those maps. That's not it. There it is, that's the, the map of this area. And I've actually built a road that should be visible on the map. That road is partially visible, and this includes the area down in the corner. So I'm going to go get my horse. And there's a donkey. I was stranded building the road when I accidentally shot my horse. And the donkey was there. So I lassoed the donkey, put a saddle on him, and rode him home. Where's my horse? There should be a horse here. Where did he go? There he is. This is a pretty fast horse. In fact, I named him Gynthian's Fast Horse. I like riding him because, like I said, he's fast. A donkey turns out to be not the fastest animal, but it's at least as fast as running. Probably slightly faster. So the ride home on the donkey wasn't that bad. And it got me a donkey. Why is this horse in the way? It wants to go back out. Let's see if I can build this real quick before he comes over here. Gotta find the half blocks. Slabs. That's what it is. And he loses interest immediately. Okay, let's get back on the horse and off I go. And I can't get through here. I could get rid of one block, I'd be able to get through. Just find my pickaxe. And here we go. Nice aerial view of the town, village. And I think I went the wrong way. Let me look at the zoomed out map. You can do that too with maps zoom out one. Yep, I'm down here. I need to go back up and go the other way. I knew that. So, you, as you can see on the maps, you can follow where you're at. And this is the road that I built all the way down here. And actually, you can see that since this map is already updated, 
you don't have to go that far. Well, there it is all updated. Now it's updated. That first map was a bigger map of the area. So this shows the road now, since I opened it right when I was visibly showing at the top of the map. And you can see this is updated, and it's updating further as I go down. I don't know if you can see that over to the left, upper left. But it is now updated. I want to go all the way down to that location just to make sure that I get everything. And now we'll go back. I had a problem rendering this. You'll see in a second. I am invisible. So I got this great sh aerial shot of me riding the horse back. And for some reason I don't show up. No idea why. Thank you, Replay Mod. This is where I found the donkey and accidentally killed my horse. And we'll just zoom through this tunnel and then I think I become visible again. Right about here, somewhere in here. You'll see me again. There we go. Now all I have to do is ride back over here and put the maps back. But I don't want to lose my horse, so I'm going to put a fence post down and use the lead to attach it to the fence post. So I attach the lead and then I can tie him off. Very useful. Then we're going to put these maps back. Let's see. Find them in my inventory. One. Two. Three. And now the big map is updated. And this is what it looks like. Not a big difference, but you go through all the trouble to build a road or a path, you'd like to see it on the map. And now we have it. Which I think is way cool. Took a long time to make this map. I really like it. Now, my next project that I want to do is to build a mob farm. I'm tired of running out of things like bones or, or spider eye, and I really want to collect gunpowder. So we're going to go work on that. I'm going to gather up some resources, and then I'll be right back to walk you through the process of building that. And we're going to start off with a collection system for the mob drops. It's nine hoppers. In this case, and I'm feeding it into three separate chests. I may change that later. Then we're going to go to a layer of glass and we'll build this around too high. I like to be able to see the mobs as they meet their demise. Then we are going to add the walls and this is using the smooth stone block. I really like this new addition. This block wasn't available in survival, but now you can actually craft it by putting stone blocks in the furnace to create smooth stone. We built this up to a height of 40 blocks and now I'm going to go through and build this the rest of the way up. I like these blocks because you can use them and it's easy to see how many blocks you're placing. People watching the video can go through and count. Counting of course is really important if you're trying to duplicate 
whatever you're watching being built in front of you and or have to count it later when you're watching the video. Bring this all the way up. And then I'm going to go eight blocks out for a total of nine blocks, including the one around the wall. We're going to go th do this in all four directions. And then we're going to fill it in to create a platform. Once we have the platform, we'll go ahead and add a wall, at least one high for now. That'll allow us to put water in. And the water placement is important. You want this to push the mobs towards the center hole. So you're going to start in the middle, and then you're going to place water on either side of that first water block. And now the water will push the mobs towards the three block hole that drops down to the killing chamber. Once I finish this, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this so that it's the same on all four sides. Next, you'll see that the water forms a gap down this, from the corner to the hole. You fix that by putting some blocks in each corner and then adding water to the corner. Once that is done, you can then remove those blocks and the water stays. There's the gap I told you about. I'm filling the water buckets. And there's the platform blocks. And there they are removed with the water. I forgot to remove this one. Either way, it won't hurt anything. Then I build a new level of the wall. Then we build to back towards the center. And we do that from all three, four directions. And this is going to be our spawning floor. And this is what the spawning area will be. The water coming from droppers will be on all four sides, as so. And I'm going to put in a row around it. This will be where the redstone is. And the water droppers filled with water buckets will go next. Now we add the walls, and I'm going to start on the next layer of spawning area. I think I'm going to use dirt this time because I have a lot of that on me. If I'd prepared better in advance, I'd, I guess I'd have enough stone to build this all out and wouldn't have to switch to dirt. We duplicate that on all four sides. And I add in the droppers with water buckets. Honestly, I figured I could use dirt because you're not going to see it anyway. It's inside the farm. I need one for each platform. These are the platforms the mobs will spawn on. Then I can build a area around it for the redstone. These are just half slabs all the way around. I ran out of smooth stone blocks, so I'm going to pull these back up and replace them with stone. Then I can go ahead and do the next layer of the wall with smooth stone blocks. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like now on the inside, as we'll just zoom in through here. And as you can see, we can easily see the multiple layers of spawning platforms and the mobs will fall off and be pushed into the water hole by the water. We're back outside and now we're putting up the wall on the top level. Next comes the roof, which we'll put that on. And this final bit is decoration, serves no other purpose. 
this is a redstone clock. As the signal goes around, it follows through each of these repeaters until it reaches the starting point, and then it continues around. Now, this signal goes over to this observer, which notices the signal and sends a signal of its own. Two signals, actually. Once when the redstone turns on, and then again when it turns off. This signal causes the piston to push down the slime blocks, which has these redstone blocks attached to it. The second signal that the observer sends causes the piston to reach down, grab the slime blocks, and pull them back up, which is what you saw just now. This new signal travels along the redstone dust and gets to the dropper, which has the water bucket. This activates, which dispenses the water. The next signal the clock sends will cause the dropper to pull the water back in, and that will make it go away. Yes, I know there's a block missing on that wall. This is the location where I will stand when I am AFK and it will allow the farm to work. To give you some perspective, the scaffolding you see there is 64 blocks tall. We're inside and the mobs are spawning. And then the water pushes them off their platform. Let's take a closer look. That is a lot of mobs. The water at the bottom collects them and pushes them all towards the hole where they can fall to their demise. And then the whole process starts again. The water clears and the mobs start to spawn. I think I could watch this all day. I find it relaxing to watch. Not sure why. These mobs somehow survive the fall, probably with magic boots. Of course, the spider climbed down to a certain point and then got knocked the rest of the way. Either way, they survive. They will despawn eventually. It's a shame that other mobs hitting them on the head doesn't cause damage. But they'll despawn. And there you have it, my mob farm. I'm going to AFK for a while and see what I can get. I think I'm going to call the end of this episode. So, thank you for watching, and goodbye. goodbye.